everyone it's Shar. welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here i am very excited because today i am doing a fantasy romance book recommendations video i freaking love romance i love monster <laughs> romances as well but for this video i had a couple of criteria for the books that would end up on this list Number one is that there had to be a plot outside of the romance. That just means there needed to be a significant amount of world building. It needed to be different than our current world and I needed it to be fantasy without a doubt. My second criteria was that there needed to be a romance and the romance had to be central, not just a romantic subplot. For this video, I only chose my top favorites, but I absolutely adore these books and I tried my best to include some books that I've only spoken about once or twice and include some books that you've never heard me speak about. So without further ado, let's jump on into the recommendation. I like my books with a little bit of spice, especially when it comes to fantasy romance or a lot of spice, depending on the book. You're gonna see that as I pop the books on the screen, I'm gonna have little chili peppers underneath them to indicate how spicy I think that book is. My first recommendation for you is Radiance by Grace Draven. This is a fantasy book about royals. In this book, we are following this woman here who is the niece of a king. And we are following this man here who is like the 10th son in a royal family. Their kingdoms have been feuding for a long time. They want to strike some kind of peace agreement, but they want to have it be like a show of good faith. So marrying relatively unimportant people in the royal line. So these two get an arranged marriage. As you can obviously see here, they are different species, however, and they both find the other repulsive. So he thinks that she is absolutely hideous and she thinks that he is absolutely terrifying, but they do end up marrying. It is a friend's to lovers kind of situation. So they don't know each other. So it's like strangers to friends to lovers all within an arranged marriage context. There is a lot of world building in this world around the magic and the feud between the two kingdoms and how they trade. I would say this is more of like a fluffy lighthearted romance. So if you want something that is low tension, I would definitely recommend this to you because for most of the time, it's just about them adjusting to each other and them coming to fall in love. But you learn more about the world World and why these two kingdoms were feuding and I love this book and I give it five stars so I highly recommend it. My next recommendation for you is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. Margaret Rogerson has put out quite a few books that are definitely in the fantasy and have a pretty significant uh, romantic subplot but Enchantment of Ravens is the most kind of romance heavy to me. So in this book we are following a woman who lives in the fey world and she is a painter. She paints portraits. She is very well known and extremely talented and she has one fake client who recommends her to the prince or the king of the fall court. And he comes over and she feels inspired and she ends up drawing emotion on his face. He doesn't realize that because obviously when she sends the painting, that's when he and his entire kingdom see the emotion. And for Faye to be shown with human expression is extremely disrespectful. So he comes storming back to her into the human realm, takes her and drags her through the forest and into the Fae realm because she needs to be punished. However, everything is not what it seems. And while the romance in here is definitely central to the story it's a little bit more subtle and that it focuses more heavily on the relationship between these two characters not necessarily on the romantic development between these two characters but I do absolutely love this book there is so much like conniving they are painted as like very terrifying creatures there is a huge like political plot here lots of action scenes so if you love fantasy and you also want a romantic plot then definitely pick up an Enchantment of Ravens. I am surprised to have this book on the list, but here it is. It is Bound to the Battle God by Ruby Dixon. This is a high fantasy <laughs> novel. In my opinion, fair warning, it is very long and the summary on Goodreads is very uh, lighthearted. But let me give you a more 
accurate to the tone of the book summary. In this book, we are following a woman who lives in Chicago and she is in her apartment one day and she is just hearing like loud screaming. This man is very upset, making a lot of noise. So she calls her landlord and it's like, whoever you moved into this apartment, they are having a massive argument. You need to do something about it. And the landlord responds and it's like, no one lives there. That apartment needs massive renovations. It is not in livable condition. There is no one who lives there. But she's hearing all of these noises. She's hearing the shouting. It's going on for days. Eventually she starts hearing loud drumming. And each time she tries to record it to get evidence of maybe a squatter, she can still hear it, but her phone and her audio is not picking it up. She eventually gets tired of it and she breaks into the apartment to see what is going on. There is a bright flash of light and my girl is transported to another world. I've never read Game of Thrones personally, but I have seen some reviews that mention that the book's world is reminiscent of Game of Thrones. But she gets transported into this world within the first five minutes. She is sold into slavery where she is going to be sacrificed to the battle god. But as it turns out, all of the gods have been kicked out of the heavens and they are here in the mortal realm. This book has so much plot. It is a ton of world building. There are feuding kingdoms and gods and aspects and a higher being who's like overseeing all of this. And there are battles with creature and our battle god is obviously like a god of war kind of character. So there is war going on. It's within the ruby verse. So you get little uh, hints of other characters from other books. Nothing that would make it so that you're confused. It's more like little Easter eggs for those who've read a lot of Ruby Dixon. I was completely surprised by how much I love this book. And of all the books, I think this one balances the romance and the fantasy pretty well. And I would definitely consider this a romanticy. I'm gonna bend the rules a little bit because technically I do consider this a monster sci-fi romance. But I think there's enough overlap for it to be on this list and this is I Married a Naga by Regine Abel. This entire series has the most ridiculous names. It starts with I Married a Lizard Man for reference but I Married a Naga follows a hunter and she is a really fantastic hunter and there is a planet that's struggling with an invasive species that is completely decimating pretty much all life on the planet. The native people of this planet open up a competition of sorts where they just bring a bunch of hunters um, onto the planet and these hunters help tackle this invasive species but there are strict rules. These hunters are not allowed to interact with or to enter Naga territory at any point. However, our main female character is hunting one of the invasive species down when she happens to notice that there is a very young Naga child being chased by one of these species. And if she doesn't go and like save this child, this child will die. So she crosses over into Naga territory to save this little kid. And that is a huge violation of rules. The Naga people, however, are lenient on her and say because she did it for noble reasons, they will not kill her. Instead, she has to marry a member of their community. So she ends up marrying our main hero here on the cover and this is the story of them falling in love but also her learning more about the world that she now has to live on, more about the people and how they live, the differences between their species because if the cover isn't tipping you off Mr. Naga is a snake. Yes. But I love this book. Again, it is definitely more fluffy and lighthearted, very similar to Radiant. So I highly recommend this if you're looking for a light fluffy read with a little bit of like political intrigue, but mostly lots of world building and beautiful scenery. Bear with me because even though I technically consider vampires and werewolves to be paranormal romances, not fantasy, again, I think that there is enough of an overlap here that it could be on this list. So this is Fangs Volume 1. This recommendation I got from Mina and I picked it up because I'm doing Escape the Readathon and I fucking loved it. This is a manga um, about vampires. So in this manga we are following a 19 year old boy who was at this kind of event that was attacked by a vampire who had kind of gone rogue and lost control of his thirst. Young boy 
is the only survivor. I'm forgetting his name. So <laughs> he's the only survivor, but he has been turned. And in this world, there is an agency for like vampire welfare. So one of the agents who works at this agency that oversees like vampire health and wellness ends up being his guardian. And he is teaching this boy about like the vampire world. They call themselves Fangs. It's the Fangs Association about how vampires take on like blood mates, partners essentially, so they can feed off of each other and control their thirst that way and their mission to have a successful and peaceful cohabitation between humans and vampires. This is definitely romance heavy because this main character, the black haired one, right? He has feelings for the 19 year old and it is about them just kind of coming together. Our 19 year old character, I wish I remembered his name, I freaking don't. Him learning more about the vampire world and navigating this and creating friendships and um, navigating his feelings for this other vampire. It is very cute. It is very explicit. Oh my gosh. You know, it's still a manga, so you don't see being specifically there are very clear uh, things happening. You know what's going on. You know what's going on. I really love this book. I give it five stars and I definitely recommend it if you are looking for just a book that you can read really quickly that has a really heavy romantic subplot and you like vampires. Then I'm recommending to you Luxuria by Colette Rose. In this book, we're following a woman who has been kicked out of the hunter society when she was a teenager because hunters go after these shadow monsters who feed and amplify human emotion. And she was like, I don't think we really should be killing these people. In fact, I think they're really sexy and I would like to fuck one. And the hunters are like, leave. So she's been kicked out for a long time. And several years later, she hears from one of the hunters who essentially tell her that they're trying to create a peace treaty between the hunters and the shadow people. And they need a bride for the king. They can't find anyone who's like, the perfect match for this but they remember that she had a big fantasy about fucking monsters and she's like i hate all of you but i very much would like to fuck a monster give me my monster husband so <laughs> she marries the king and this is about their relationship and the history between the hunters and the shadow people the history that they have also been hiding um what the hunters motivations really are for the shadow people and the shadow people's true purpose it is very very steamy and it is really about these two coming together and i would say that if you enjoy kind of like gothic underworld vibes if you like heavy spice and steam then i would recommend that you check out this book but be warned it is very explicit. I've already mentioned that I think that vampires and werewolves are technically paranormal romances, but I do think that this book can also go on this list. This is Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. As far as I know, this is like her only paranormal romance, and I really love this. This is a novella about a another hunter. Wow, I didn't realize that was a theme. A hunter, right? She is in charge of getting rid of the bad guys. And one day a werewolf walks into her shop and she recognizes him for what he is pretty immediately. But he is big golden retriever energy and he sends her, he's like, it's my mate. I'm so excited. He just wants the chance to be in her presence. He asks her out and she agrees with the intention of killing him. But of course, this is romance heavy. So we know that doesn't happen. It is just such a cute, quick story. And I love soft boys. If you also love soft boys, you're going to really enjoy this book. That is it. Those are all of the books that I have to recommend for you today. As I mentioned, I love these kind of books in general. I have multiple recommendation books on on my channel. I will leave the playlist linked in the video if you want to check out some other books that I would recommend if you're looking for a romance heavy fantasy or a monster romance recommendation. You will see all of that on my channel. But thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you are not already. It just supports me and this channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye!